Sometimes we forget how much we've been through. Like, we've been through a ton of shit, man. Global pandemic? That's history book shit that we all just got through. Like, we're going in the book. <laughs> when I was younger, I used to look at history books and be like, I wonder what our thing's gonna be. <laughs> now I'm like, I want a different fucking thing. This is the stupidest thing. Change my thing. <laughs> when I was little, it was all World War II. Everyone's grandpa and grandma were in World War II. I'd go to my buddy Brian's house after school. His grandpa would just be sitting in the corner of the room talking to no one in particular. He'd be like, I met your grandmother. We were digging trenches for the war. <laughs> we were eight years old. <laughs> She was the love of my life. My little Nazi hunter. I'm like, yo, Brian, dude, what's up with him? What's, what is that? And he's like, oh, Pop-Pop, he's just napping. I'm like, napping? <laughs> dude, I'm pretty sure Pop-Pop was an assassin at some point. It's not a regular nap. That nap has seen a lot of death and zero therapy. <laughs> World War II made everyone badass. They had to be. Our thing? <laughs> Very few badasses. I already feel terrible for my future grandkids. They're gonna come up to me someday like, Papa, what was the great pandemic like? And I'll have to look them in the eye and be like, oh, it was terrible. All the restaurants were closed. They'll be like, what? So you couldn't eat? No, no, you could eat. <laughs> it just had to be delivered right to your doorstep. <laughs> Dark days. <laughs> Let me like, Papa, that doesn't sound that bad. Like, doesn't sound that bad. I was trapped in there with your grandmother the whole fucking time. <laughs> Love of my life. You guys want to see this impression I've been working on? Yeah. All right, cool, cool. This is my impression of a guy in the mafia, like New York, New Jersey, Italian mafia. Uh, and he just did a ton of mushrooms. Like, <laughs> way too many mushrooms. And he's about to trip balls, okay? This is the moment, this is my impression of the moment the mushrooms kick in for this mobster, and he has the high of his life. Okay, here we go. Yeah, I want more wine. What am I, a fuck? Come on, what am I, a fuck? Oh, what, oh, what am I? What am I? What? What am I? What? Am I, what, am I, what, 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 what am I? What am I? What am I? What uh What am I? Thank you. That is guy in the mafia on shrimp. Thank you so much. Thanks. We've all been there, right? In the mafia? It's nice to just be able to talk about whatever I want for a second. I gotta watch what I say everywhere else in life. I can't even speak freely at home anymore. Yeah, apparently the uh, language me and my friends use has gotten out of hand. And uh, my wife says certain words are off limits now at our place. Like we can't say the word pussy in our home anymore. It's worn out, it's welcome. And we can't say the word bitch either, uh, which is fair. I'm not firing that from the hip. <laughs> when I get home, I'm not kicking in the door like, where's dinner, bitch? You know, I know my role. I'm not that guy, but that's the rule now. I can't say pussy or bitch. Anyone who comes over now cannot say pussy or bitch in our home. Uh, the good news is when my dad comes over now, he's got to call me either Zach or son. <laughs> <laughs> Papa. <laughs> Dinner at my place. <laughs> Man, my dad's a tough guy to get to know. My mom's very different. She's the best. I feel like I should talk about family since this is where the Fast and the Furious is made. You gotta talk about family here, right? It's the most important thing. Right, Vin? My mom's way different. She loves everything and everyone. 
My mom came from this tiny little village in Morocco. It's not even on the map. This village in North Africa didn't even make, my mom didn't make the map. <laughs> and she loves being American. It's her favorite thing. It's like her favorite thing about herself, you know? She loves America so much. And it's beautiful, because she's not like an old white person, you know? <laughs> old white people aren't allowed to love America that much anymore. <laughs> if you're old and white and you love America as much as my mom, I'm like, chill the fuck out, dude. <laughs> Where were you on January 6th, dog? What's going on? No one loves the Punisher that much, you know? But my mom loves it because her life was really hard where she came from, you know? She had to escape her shitty situation, trapped in poverty. And the first thing she did as a kid, she snuck into a school to learn something that day. And then she raised me and my brother here in America, first in her family to leave and come here. She's like, the boys have to go to school here. It's the law. I like this place. <laughs> then she found out about after school programs. She's like, there is more learning after. <laughs> Sign us the fuck up. This is our job. <laughs> she put me and my brother in everything. We did soccer camp. We did swimming camp. One summer we did theater camp because I guess we weren't getting beaten up enough that year. <laughs> but the coolest thing my brother and I learned in theater camp was the art of stage combat, which is where you fake beat the shit out of each other. And it looks real but no one gets hurt, so we couldn't get in trouble. Like, they taught us this move where I could grab my little brother by the head and fake knee him in the face. But I, would, I wouldn't touch him, I'd just slap my knee, he would whip his head back, it looked like I murdered him. And we were pro wrestling fans, like, we did this move every day. We'd be at the grocery store two feet behind our Muslim mom, just trying to shop for her family post 9-11. And I'd be like, oh, he's dead! And my brother pretended to lose consciousness in the cereal aisle. <laughs> and our mom would be like, no, it's a joke. He's alive. It's okay. It's fine. Eyes are open. I show you. Come. It's okay. Put the phone down. Don't take me back, you know? And so, <laughs> fast forward, end of that summer, my mom sends me and my brother to Morocco to meet our family for the first time without her, on our own. I don't know if any of you have foreigners in your work life or your family life, but it is impossible to get to know someone with a language barrier between you. You just have a few words to work with. It's like, welcome, sit, eat, good, oh, thank you. Okay, good, good, good. <laughs> I love you. Like, that's it. We're out of words. We say I love you. They know five words of English. We don't know any Arabic because we're American. We're like, meet us halfway. Learn our language. Just, just how we travel. I don't know why. <laughs> Every country you go to, there's some American. Be like, motherfucker, bathroom. You don't know bathroom? And you're like... Dude, you didn't think bathroom would come up on this trip? <laughs> For the worst. But I really tried to connect with my family using just the base words we had. My brother was all shy and quiet, but I'm like, I'm gonna build a bridge with this family. So I was working those base words. I'm like, Morocco is good. Thank you. I love Morocco. Thank you. Morocco. <laughs> Number one. You know number one. For me, number one, Morocco. <laughs> Thank you. And my brother's like, dude, what is that racist accent you're doing? <laughs> I'll just do regular English, you know? But to this day, I can't help but ethnic it up every time I see my family. Like, I would never be like, is this seat taken? I'm always like, I sit here, it's good. <laughs> Feels polite, it's the opposite. Do not talk to people like that. <laughs> They brought out food. I'm like, couscous, number one food for me, couscous. <laughs> After like an hour and a half of me pointing at everything in sight and just saying number one for me, <laughs> my little brother gets bored. He turns to me, he's like, dude, let's show him the fucking... <laughs> <laughs> Cut the bullshit, man. Let's bring these cultures together with a fake knee to the face, you know? So I'm like, yeah, we'll show them what we learned at theater camp. So we get up to perform. Language barrier hasn't gone anywhere. <laughs> and it's rude to leave the couscous plate. Like it's one big dish the whole family eats out of together. So when we got up, they were immediately offended. They're like, you don't like Morocco? And we're like, no, no. Um, 
Uh, theater? Uh, theater camp, no? Stage combat? Theater? Theater camp? No? Okay, just trying stuff. Okay. Uh, welcome, welcome, good. Uh, me and brother, um, showtime. Okay, thank you. And we bowed in the beginning. We forgot all the rules of theater. Now it's like a Taekwondo match to the death. And I grabbed my brother by the head and I swung that knee with everything I had. Uh, and I just need my brother in his actual fucking head <laughs> as hard as I could. I don't know if it was stage fright or the foreign audience rattled me a little bit, I'm not gonna lie. Whatever it was, I missed my mark by like four inches and just fucking direct hard. Like hard. Like, he's different now, you know? Uh, he can smell emotions, he can spot a fake diamond from a mile away. Fluent in Arabic now, so we did crack the language barrier with that knee to the head. You guys, I'm Zach Chapeloni. My brother's fine. Thank you so much. <laughs>